Hey everybody, welcome to today's Wednesday's Word. I'm Pastor Keith here at Zion United Methodist Church in Myerstown, Pennsylvania. And I'm so glad you're along with me today. Thank you for watching. We've been looking at our study here in 1 John, and we're going to continue with that as we look at chapter 2 in 1 John. So if you have your Bibles, you can grab them and open them up. And I'm actually going to read the passage I read last week, but I have some other things I want to go over there. So we're in 1 John 2, verses 7 through 11. And it says this, Beloved, I am writing you no new commandment, but an old commandment that you had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word that you have heard. At the same time, it is a new commandment that I am writing to you, which is true in him and in you, because the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. Whoever says he is in the light and hates his brother is still in darkness. And whoever loves his brother abides in the light. And in him there is no cause for stumbling. But whoever hates his brother is in the darkness and walks in the darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. And so what I want to focus on today is um, the last couple of verses here mainly. And that is this theme that John likes to write about in his writings, in the Gospel of John, in his letters, and then also um, in the book of Revelation. But we see this theme of darkness and light, okay, darkness and light. And remember what John is talking about here is there were false teachers who said they knew the Lord, and yet they walked in darkness. They walked in a way in which they... Um, hate, he says, hated their brothers, a way that they actually, um, you know, they, they showed preferential treatment over some, uh, you know, some over others. And he's saying that that's inconsistent with God's ways. You can tell when a person does not know the Lord Jesus, um, by the way, that person loves others. And so we have this idea of light versus darkness. And I want to look at this in a little bit more detail for you. Darkness I mean, imagine you get up in the middle of the night. Now, you're, let's say you're in a hotel room, which you've never been in before. And you get up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom. And you're not really sure where your bag is on the floor. You're not sure where the chair is or the desk. And you start walking around. And if it's pitch dark, it's really hard to see. And you may run into something. You may stub your toe or you may, you know, you're searching for the door or something. And, and you struggle to get around the room. And that's because dar in darkness, we can't see. And that's pretty clear. We understand that. So what is uh, John talking about here as far as darkness? Darkness represents evil. It represents the evil one. It represents deception and lies. And darkness is really where we end up when we sin. Okay? Um, sin is simply a, a disobeying God. It's rebelling against God and, and God's perfect ways. And so what happens is when we sin, um, and we, we commit a sin, we, we disobey God, maybe we wrong another person, okay? We gossip against somebody, or we, um, li we lie about them, or we steal from them. And when we commit a sin, there's something that happens within us because God has put within each person a conscience. We have a conscience that shows us when we do something wrong um, that we shouldn't have done it. And our conscience gives us a sense of guilt. Conscience basically tells us, you know, um, how would how, I think about myself? How would I feel if I was just treated, you know, in that way? So if I treat somebody else poorly, I gossip about them. How would I feel if I was that person? And so our conscience actually causes us to feel a sense of guilt. And then what, what ends up happening is after we feel a sense of guilt, we actually feel a sense of shame. Um, guilt has more to do with our actions. Shame has more to do with our identity. So not just that I committed a sin, not just that I, I lied or I gossiped, but that I am a bad person. I am a liar. I am a gossip. And shame has a way of causing us to fall away from God. And we actually, when we sin, we want to go into the darkness. And that's what we see with Adam and Eve in the garden. They had this perfect relationship with God. 
perfect communion with God. As soon as they disobeyed God, what did they do? They went behind the bushes. They, they made themselves clothes of fig leaves. And they hid from the presence of God because they didn't feel like they were um, acceptable in the presence of God. And so that's what happens when we sin. You know, the devil will um, tempt us and deceive us to sin. And then he comes around and then accuses us. And then we feel this sense of guilt and shame. And then we want to hide in the darkness. Now listen to what Jesus says in John chapter 3, starting in verse 18. In John 3, 18, he says, whoever believes in him is not condemned. He's talking about himself there. But whoever does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world. The people loved darkness rather than light because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his work should be exposed. But whoever does what is true comes to the light so that it may be clearly seen that his works have been carried out in God. And so what Jesus is saying is that we love our sin. We are selfish uh, at our very core. We're rebellious against God. We want to do our own thing that is outside the will of God. And so we love our sin and, and we commit sin and then we end up you know, in darkness. And we love to stay in the darkness. Um, because we know that we are not acceptable in the, the perf perfect presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so that kind of explains what the darkness is. Now, what is the light? Jesus actually calls himself in John 8, 12. He says, it says, in a, and Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And this is really important because we understand that Jesus has come into the world. He is the Son of God. He is he's Emmanuel. He is God in the flesh. And he says that he comes into this world as the light. And you know that any time you're in a dark room, if all of a sudden you shine a bright light, you begin to see what's in the room. You see, um, you know, the chairs or the bed or you see the furniture. You see what's on the ground, you know, you see all these things because light reveals it. And Jesus comes into the world and he reveals um, the dark, what's in the darkness. He reveals sin because Jesus has come as the perfect, righteous, pure, holy son of God. He is completely pure and holy. He never sinned. He is absolutely righteous. And when he comes into the world, his perfect presence actually reveals to us our own sin okay and so jesus says that he is the light of the world now um, we see in the first john passage i read today that there is a very close uh, link between light and love in other words when jesus shines his light he's actually shining his love that's how he reveals his light it's through his love that he's shown to us we know that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And so we see that Christ has loved us by laying down his life, by, by suffering on a cross and giving of his life. He shed his blood for us. And that is the, the way that he has demonstrated his love for us. That while we were yet sinners, that he died for us. Okay? And so... He comes and he shines that, that light of his love. And we can have one of two responses to the light of Jesus Christ, the love of Jesus Christ. The first response is that we can feel this um, sense of, of guilt and shame, like we don't belong in the presence of, of Jesus. And, and we actually want to go further into the darkness. So we feel ashamed and we, we recognize that we have, we have no business being in his presence and we actually move away from him further into the darkness. And that's what Jesus is talking about in that passage in John 3. He says, you guys love your darkness. You love your sin so much that you just want to stay there. Even though I'm, I'm shining the light of my love and, and the gospel to you, 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 sh you run away from it like a, like a cockroach runs away. You know, when you turn the light on, it runs underneath um, the furniture. It wants to get away from it. 
And I see this in people all the time. And it's, it's so sad to see because um, what they'll say to me, and, and maybe you watching have even thought this before or said it before, but I'll invite somebody to church and they'll say to me, oh, you don't want me in your church. You don't know what I've done or what kind of a person that I am. I don't belong in church. And that is such a lie from the pit of hell. It's like people think, well, you have to have some kind of righteousness or you have to dress a certain way. You have to, to act a certain way in order to come to church. And they miss the point that everybody that comes to church is a sinner. Everybody that comes to church needs a savior. And so I see it kind of as an excuse, but I do believe that there are people who are resistant to even coming to church because they feel like they, they don't have a right to be here or they're not good enough. And they're actually just kind of scurrying back into the darkness where Jesus wants us to come to the light. And so that's the first response is to just run away from the light of Jesus. The second response is to, to recognize the love of Jesus and to actually turn to him to allow him to shine his light. And, and that light reveals to us our own sin and, and our guilt for that sin or our, um, you know, the, the penalty for that sin that we deserve. And it's, it's recognizing that Jesus has done something about it, that he's died on a cross for us, okay? And, and so we can allow that love that Christ has shown to us to actually turn our hearts toward him and we put our trust in him, we put our faith in him, and something happens that he does a work of regeneration. He does this supernatural work within us and changes us so that we now um, desire to be in the light. We want him to shine his light in us. We want to read the word every day and, and have it revealed to us our sins so that we can repent of it and turn to him. And that, that light actually is something we desire, okay? And so um, what happens is when we, when we take that step and we recognize um, that light, we want to come to the light, we want to know him, we want to um, know that love that he has shown us through his cross, and we have a transformed life, something happens within us. And that's that um, we actually become a light uh, in this world. And one of the things that I find so fascinating is that um, Jesus calls himself the light of the world, but he, he also calls us the light of the world who believe in him. And so when you look at Matthew 5, 14, Jesus says this to us, you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. And so something happens that when we come into the light and we accept Christ and we trust in him as our Savior, when we spend time in the light, we actually become a source of light in this world. We actually become the ones shining in this world and, and we shine the love of Jesus Christ um, for others, that they can see Christ in us and that they can actually come to Christ through us. And I think that is so awesome. It's such a great responsibility that God has placed on our lives to be the light of the world. Now I want to share one more scripture with you from 2 Corinthians chapter 4. In verse, um, I'll start in verse 3. It says, and even if our gospel it is, is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For what we proclaim is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, with ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, for God who said, let light shine out of darkness, has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. And this is so important because it shows us that, that the enemy, Satan, is responsible for the darkness. He's responsible, as it says in 1 John, the darkness blinds our eyes. 
If you were to spend 10 years in, in a cave where there's absolutely no light and it's complete pitch dark, completely pitch dark, your eyes would begin to, um, to not function properly. You wouldn't be able to process light the same way. Imagine coming out of a cave after being inside of one for 10 years. And you pro I, don't, I can't imagine what that would be like. But you wouldn't be able to see properly. It actually, darkness has a way of blinding us. And, and the enemy is blinding people everywhere across the world. There is a huge deception going on in our world right now and in our nation right now. And the enemy is the one who is blinding people. And it is our responsibility to remove the veil from their eyes um, through prayer and through shining the gospel, the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ um, to everyone that we can. You are the light of the world if you are in Christ, if you've accepted him as your Lord and Savior, if you believe in him, if, if you've been covered in his blood, he is the light, he shines that light into you and then you become the light of the world. And you are here for a reason, for a purpose, and that is to shine light and to help other people recognize that they're in darkness, that they're in sin, that they are headed for an eternity in hell. And you shine the, the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ. You tell people who Jesus is. You show them who he is through your love. And you, you help to remove that veil from their eyes so they can see clearly. That's what God has given us as, as a responsibility to be doing in this world. And so I want to encourage you today. We are in the midst of, of a very dark time in our world. But it says in 1 John that the darkness is passing away, that Jesus Christ is victorious. And that he is using us to bring about his final victory. He's going he's gonna to bring this all, uh, he's going to wrap it all up. He's gonna, this is going to be a great consummation of, of his uh, great plan. And we're a part of it. But I want to encourage you to be the light um, that God is calling you to be. Shine that light. Shine the light of Jesus Christ into other people's lives. Um, I want to thank you so much for watching today. I hope that you are encouraged in your walk. Know that Jesus is in control. He's coming back soon. And I hope that you have a blessed week. And we'll see you right back here next week. God bless you.